In this video, I'm gonna tell you the top five and the bottom five revision tips. I'm gonna tell you how to manage your time so you can revise for all of your subjects. And this is still important this year because you should not deprive yourself of preparing for those exams. You gain a lot of skills by going through that exam preparation period. So don't deprive yourself of it even this year. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you the top five and the bottom five revision techniques. Essentially, I've got five do's and five don'ts for revision. And some of them might surprise you. And stay tuned to the end of this video because you are gonna find out how to revise quickly and effectively. And that's how you're gonna make sure you've got time to revise for all of your subjects. Thanks so much to Tassamai for sponsoring this video. And Tassamai is based on the best evidence of how students learn. Stay tuned to the end of this video because I'm gonna tell you how Tassamai makes use of the top revision techniques. This has not been plucked out of the air. This is based on evidence. This is based on a meta study called Dunlosky et al. It's a paper called Improving Students' Learning with Effective Learning Techniques, Promising Directions from Cognitive and Education. <laughs> Promising Directions from Cognitive and Educational Psychology. This is the findings of actual psychological studies that I'm gonna to present to you today. So first up, and the most important one is practice testing. Self-quizzing was the only one of the 10 techniques that they looked at in this study to be always effective. It always showed a positive efficacy, which means it works in very many different situations. In all the different situations tested, practice testing was the only one which came out as being an effective way to study. So you can trust that it works in all the situations they tested. So the next most effective number two is spaced revision. Simply put, this means just give it a bit of time before returning to a topic. Once you've worked on it, come back to it after a day, a week, a month, that's what spaced repetition is. So those first two are the only two which came out as always being high utility, always being recommended. So these are the two that you should definitely do. Now I hear what you're gonna say, all right, it's fine. That sounds a bit hard, doesn't it? You're telling me to do lots of practice testing and to leave gaps in between. Well, that sounds like a lot of effort. Well, okay, you need to make sure that you're using your time well. What sounds like a lot of effort to me is putting a lot of time into an ineffective revision technique. And that's what students get wrong. So that might sound like a lot of effort, but those two are definitely the quickest ways to revise as well. So you have to think to yourself, right, well, self-quizzing will take a lot of mental effort but it will take less time. So let's move on to number three. Number three on the list then is interleave practice. This is the idea that you shouldn't just focus on one topic at a time, but you should do practice quizzing and testing across multiple topics, moving from one to the other and mixing up the order as you go. Number four is self-explanation. And this is one that I've always talked about doing. This is one I've always advocated. It's when you have to explain something out loud or just put yourself in the role of a teacher and try and explain the method of working through a problem. It's often called the Feynman technique and it's one that loads of people recommend. And I've got a video on it just here. And the last one of the top five, the five definitely do's is elaborate interrogation. Simply put, this means that you as a learner need to justify a concept. So you need to explain why something is true or explain why something is not true. So actually going through that process of justifying a conclusion or challenging a misconception is a really good way to make it stick in your head. So next is the five don'ts of revision. It's in order from don't unless to definitely don't. So summarizing is one that I'd recommend you probably don't do or just making notes. Yeah, you can probably hear in your head your teacher telling you to make notes or summarize the topic. And this is the only one that's don't unless, and it's because the study found that it was useful with some older learners. Basically, people who've got more experience of taking notes. And they recommended essentially that you should only do this if you have an explicit method of taking notes. So for example, you can look at the Cornell method. Would you like to see a video on the Cornell method where I can describe a method that you can use to take notes? Let me know in the comments below. So take notes if you've been taught a method of summarizing. The problem is that they found that most people who take notes without any kind of direct explicit method of taking notes, they just end up copying out paragraphs. And that's a definitely don't. The study also found that you shouldn't use keyword monomics. And I bet that's been recommended to you. Things like making short stories and poems around lists of words, they work, but they work if you've rehearsed them loads and loads of times. And that's what I'm talking about. It may work in the long run, <laughs> 
but it might take you ages to get there and we don't have time for that. You've got so many different subjects to revise. I suggest you look for the most effective and the most time effective ways of learning. Another popular one is using imagery and I bet you've been told to do this as well. Constructing mind maps and things like that. This study which analyzes hundreds of different studies finds that across the piece using imagery is not a useful way of memorizing something. So I'm afraid using images, concept maps, mind mapping, it's not really an effective way to study. It certainly isn't recommended by this study. And next it's highlighting text. I know a lot of you like to highlight while you read and I can see it as a, a way to keep yourself active as you read something. My experience and the problem with highlighters is students you tend to highlight too much. They aren't very selective in what they're highlighting. They end up highlighting whole passages. And so that's not useful for identifying key information. This was the only one of the techniques that this study found had an overall negative rating i.e. highlighting actually was found more often than not to have a negative impact on retention. People who used highlighters did worse because of that technique. And the study shows this. And the last revision technique, again, is one of the most popular ones. It's just simply rereading a text. Reading is very important to understand something, but it isn't the way that we internalize and memorize facts. But once you've read and understood something, you need to be using that information to do something with it, like practice quizzing. <laughs> And that's the way you're going to internalize and memorize the content of that text. Don't reread it, use it. And that's what Tassimai does. It's plenty of reading, but it's reading that's being used all the time to answer questions. And that's how we internalize. That's how we memorize. If your school isn't already using Tassimai for science, maths, or English, then talk to your teachers. You can sign up as a private subscriber, but if your school signs up, then you'll probably get it for free. Tassimai uses three of the top five revision techniques, and that ensures your revision is fast and effective. It's based on an AI algorithm that selects the right questions for you at the right time. It makes sure you're doing practice quizzing, spaced revision, and interleaving, three of the top five revision techniques. All you have to do is 10 minutes a day for maybe three times a week. And the more you do Tassimai, the better your memory will get. And what is more is you can use Tassimai to identify your key priority areas, and then you can target them with more focused revision, perhaps using the other two techniques that the evidence recommends. That is self-explanation, and elaborate interrogation. So if you need more advice on how you can better improve your revision, then check out my playlists here. I think you'll love my video on the Feynman technique, which uses the ideas of self-explanation. Or perhaps you fancy working through some modeled exam questions. Click here to get started. And don't forget to subscribe for more study tip videos just like this one.